Greetings and welcome to another wonderful program of choices. We are just a few days after we'd have celebrated 50 years as a republic. And there's a line in a wonderful national song that says, from Pacaraima Peaks of Power. The second line says, from Quarantine Lost Sand. It speaks to the beauty of this nation, God's golden city that has never grown old. And as we celebrate and as we welcome you to this wonderful program, we pray that you will enjoy the scenic beauty that you see around you, you see around us. And we pray also that as you listen, your lives will be changed and transformed because Ghana is a wonderful place, a place where we encourage each and every one of us to look to the greatness and the goodness of God, that his favor will depend, descend upon this land, and we all as Guyanese would be indeed what God intends us to be. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Gentlemen. Last week we made mention of the fact that we are about to celebrate uh, 50 years as a republic, 50 years since we would have gained republican status. And as a people, we made mention of the importance of us um, working together. It is important that we, we cooperate, we live in unison, even as we attempt to uh, use the resources in this country for the benefit of all the people. We are about to go, in this 50 years, it's, it's, it's um, a situation where we are about to go into elections. This is a period where sometimes we see lots of, we see signs of division, signs of dissension, and uh, those signs we really don't want even as we are about to celebrate this 50 years. And, 50 years marks uh, in, in a biblical context jubilee. It's a period of, of triumph, a period of victory and so on. And I know lots of the political parties might be anticipating victory. But what we want to we want to ensure is that the will of God be done over this nation. And uh, we're going to say without any kind of reservation that Diana belongs to God. Amen. And ultimately, uh, God would want to do what only he see fit um, with, with the people of this land and therefore even as we go into this period let us be conscious of the fact that once this period is over we still have to come together and work for the benefit of Guyana and most importantly we have to ensure that the will of God be done over this land. Lots of people want, want to lead. Um, the, the issue is whether you are qualified to lead, whether you have what it takes to be a great leader in terms of bringing people together, in terms of making people work together as, as, a, as a theme. And we speak here not as a group of forces who just, um, just arrived, but we are, uh, all the men here, we have a voice. We are not echoes. We don't say what other people say. We speak from the heart of God. And the heart of God is that this nation must prosper this nation must develop and therefore it is important for those who um, will be part of this process make sure that their views are in alignment with god's views because if that is not so god will do what only alone could do gentlemen you know the golden jubilee republic jubilee for this nation is a critical moment in this nation's history it is celebrated under the team, Guyana, together, reflect, celebrate, transform. And as I think, as I ponder on those three words, three scriptures come to mind. Proverbs 27, 19, it says, As in water reflects face, so the heart of man reflects the man. Ecclesiastes 3, 13, it says, And that everyone should eat and drink, and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Romans 12, 2. And do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Even as we reflect in this season, it is critical to take the time to bring to remembrance what God has done for us individually and as a nation, as a people. Guyana is a blessed nation. We are a blessed people because the Lord Most High has favored us. But even in re reflecting and remembering, we can reflect on the negatives or we can reflect on the positives. We want to encourage all of us to reflect on the positives so that we can celebrate celebrate what we have, celebrate what we've worked for, what we've been able to achieve thus far. And in doing so, set our minds, because transformation comes by the renewing of the mind, set our minds forward to develop this nation for good, to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The next generation, refreshing, inspirational, transformational in a couple of days well we will reflect we want to encourage all of us to go to the house of the Lord on Sunday because Monday we make a very important decision or perhaps we then actualize our decision or our decisions might have been made already and we want you we want to encourage you to orderly and peacefully exercise your franchise and just before we celebrate and thank God for what he would have accomplished once again in our nation we are aware this thing about elections is not a new thing and you always have people vying you know in the book of Judges we have an interesting um, characterization of people vying for power. And the writer, it's all about a man named Abimelech and how behind the scenes he plotted and consorted and schemed to get his own way. And so, in our country, we have all the dynamics of Judges chapter 9 at work, all the dynamics. The thing is, we are asking you to read Judges chapter 9. And we pray that at the end of the day, you will be able to identify the olive tree from all, I don't think, we have any um, symbol with the olive tree, right? So we, we, we're we safe to make the reference, the complete reference <laughs> here, because next year, you know, people are saying yeah. we're using a symbol. But the, the, the scripture uses the olive tree, the fig tree, uh, the vine, and the bramble. Of course, we have a, a, a wider range. But we have to boil down and as we choose, choose the leaders who will be symbolic of pleasing God, worshipping God, and bringing the best out of man, the olive tree. So we recommend you read uh, the fast-flowing um, account stated in Judges chapter 9. And even as we do this, I want to admonish us to look at verse 13 of Judges 9. I mean, the vine provides wine to cheer the heart of God and man. But as we go forward, please, look how you're cheering yourself, preparing for elections. You might be tempted to indulge in the beverages that are provided. Please, for heaven's sake, when you get to that place where you know your limit or you don't know your limit, make conscious decisions that you will not be sidetracked by what you take in, but you want to make sure that you give of your best to this country because we need your support. You know what I like about chapter 9 is that it gives us a true picture of 
what should I say, all and sundry that might be vying for your vote and mine. Um, but what is significant in the chapter is that once you examine it, it helps you to make that important decision. What the olive um, does, the olive tree is fruitful, it provides um, olive that can be used for so many great things. And so in looking at leadership, we are to look at those that would be not just productive, but those who will have the interest of the masses at heart. Because the olive provides for all those who are, are in need. Anyone, whether you're young, old, great or small, you can benefit from the fruit of the olive tree. You know, leadership, is, leadership is so, such a critical part of our lives, our daily lives. Leadership is either the problem or the solution. Let us choose to be part of the solution. So many of our commentators vying for leadership romance the problem, but have not been able to give one solution. <laughs> we have to be very careful as we choose our leaders. Let us work together to provide solutions. There are people at the grassroots that are working out situations in their daily lives and we are learning from each other. Let us not allow uh, politicians, so to speak, to divide us, but let us use those same skills that we garnered over time as we work at the grassroots. Let us use them to, to help us to continue to fortify our focus, our vision, and let us choose uh, and allow God to help us to choose those, those leaders that will take us from levels to levels that will grow us as a nation, that will cause us to um, come to the realization of some of those giftings that we talk about. The name of this program is Choices. And that's what we're talking about come, from, come, come March 2nd. If we were to put Judges 9 in modern day parlance, the four leaders presented themselves they also gave us an insight into their manifesto. In, in, in verse number seven, now when they had told Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Jerusalem and lifted his voice and cried out and said to them, listen to me, men of Shechem, the God, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth to anoint a king over them. The whole issue is to find a king. We would say in our modern day parlance to find president. That they may that they may he may reign over them. And they said to the olive tree, this is the first candidate, reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, his manifesto, should I cease giving my oil? With which they honor God, honor God and men and go sway over the trees you know this thing is just swaying should i leave my lofty position of being very productive bringing on to god and to man and just to be uh to receive that accolade with which they honor god and men then the tree said to the fig, come and reign over us. And the fig tree brought out his manifesto. Should I cease my sweetness and my good fruit just to sway over the trees? Then they said to the vine, come, come, come reign over, over us. And the, and the vine produced his manifesto. Should I cease my new wine, which cheers both God and men? And so they came down to the bramble and come and reign over us. The bramble uh, produced his, his manifesto. If in truth you anoint me as king over you, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, 
Let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. These are not words of hope. These are not signs of hope. These are words of destruction, of doom. The beautiful thing about this is in this very peaceful environment, in this wonderful country of ours, you evaluate these different groups and make a choice where God will be honored and man would be honored. But that's the important thing about this thing here. The tree before talks about honoring God in their manifesto. Didn't leave God out. The torn bush was about honoring me. Come and take shelter under me. I must dictate. Everything is about me. And if this, this doesn't happen, well, I will burn down everything. I will destroy everything. Because it is all about me, and we have to look at these areas when we make our choices. The one who will be selfish, and the one who will be selfless. And as we make our decisions, as we read this story, we can choose to make a decision and recognize that if we leave God out of this picture, what could happen to us is that we will be dictated to, or we may be, ma man be manipulated, manipulated by a man who has selfish reasons. We cannot go leaderless. We obviously need a leader. And uh, I guess I can see that this has been the central point of this. And thank you, Pastor, for reminding us of it being an allegory uh, using personification. And that is what we can actually see that there is the need for a leader yeah. or who would be best selected has been the issue. And in our environment, that's the critical decision we have to make. Who is to be selected? You must go and vote. You must select a leader. But who? It's clear you cannot therefore make decisions based on your association clear you can't make decisions based on your ethnic or ethnicity clearly you cannot make decisions based on threats it must go deeper than that and i love the point that my brother made a few moments ago that the service of a leader is to honor god whatever we do for people is really to honor god and um and that's why all the other trees were contemplating. What we are doing presently is honoring God, swaying or taking a position, um, sitting in a high seat. Is it really going to honor Him or just bring glory to ourselves? The bramble, the bramble found that the, instead of service unto God, he found that the position of being a leader is a great thing. The bramble had nothing to offer, really. You know. <laughs> nothing. As you go through it, yeah. had nothing to offer, but he really wanted to lead. Yeah. Um, all the others, they spoke about what they could have given, the qualities that they had. But the bramble had nothing, but he wanted to lead. What is troubling here for me is that, you know, um, the persons or the voters, the electors, they went through that whole list there, and finally they came to the bramble. The others, even though they had to offer, they were reluctant to lead. And um, so in choosing, we have to be careful, not simply to run to those who simply want to rule because, you know, of the opportunities that they might have, but rather we need to find those who, even though they are reluctant, they have good qualities, we should encourage them to come to the fore and lead the and people. I think, and I think that's so important in terms of... Um, in terms of deciding whether you want to lead. And um, I was actually going to make the point that they, they, except the bramble, the other, the other trees knew what they are capable of doing. They knew what they could produce. And for some strange reason, you always find um, people who are not prepared, people who are not ready. They always seem to 
find themselves in a position where they want to project themselves. <laughs> and, uh, and, and lots of times when they do get the position because of, 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 of the state of the state that they would have been in, in terms of the readiness, they, 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 they make a mess of, of, of the situation and therefore um, we have to look for people and to find people who are holistic in their thinking, people who, who are thinking national and not, you know, self. And those are some of the of, of the qualities. For some particular reason, you always find the, the, the ones who are not capable of doing a very good job, advancing and projecting themselves. And you, they always seem to be, to be, you know, in your face. We have to you go. I'm, I'm sure that's where, where you're going. We have to go against this pitch that was made here. Remember, you are my brother. <laughs> we have to go beyond yeah, that. Yeah. Thank you, we have sir. to go to the Thank point you. where you have Thank you. Uh, to bring something to this table. The olive tree brought yeah. something to the table. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fig tree brought yeah. something to the table. And we know, you know, in this country, we know those who have brought things to the table. We also know those who would like to take things from the table. <laughs> we, we take things we from have, the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. We this is this is a fantastic allegory. Yes. You know, the poetry is rich. And that's the reason why we, we can look at it. Should I should I the fig I mean let's look. We could spend the entire time dealing with the bramble. But we want to focus on signs of hope. Yes. You look at the olive tree saying, I want to honor God. Yeah. And the order is very important. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. And I only, I want to honor God and I want to honor wow. man. Yeah. I, I want to bring um, a, an environment, create an environment where people will benefit. You know, I, I want to create that kind of environment. And I think the, the, the fig and the vine, they moved also in the same, in the same direction. And um, is it worthy of consideration to examine the bramble? The bramble brought nothing to the table. But saying, remember, we are flesh and blood. And uh, when, it, when it comes to signs of hope, uh, one point that we need to notice, uh, that we need to take note of as kingdom people, is the transition from being passive to being active, right? It's important for us at this point in time as kingdom people, for us not to look at ourselves just as voters, but, but for us to look at ourselves as directors, right? This is our opportunity to determine the future of our country, to determine uh, our dec how our decade of development is going to go, how our century of success is going to, is going to play out, right? So you, many people right now are not really interested they don't think that their vote matters even in the kingdom they think their vote doesn't matter that they're that influential and there's nothing that they could do to affect what's going on in Guyana right now but i'm here to tell you that one of the biggest signs of hope for us as not only guyanese but as kingdom people is to transition from our passive mode to being active and when i say being active i don't mean being disruptive as in uh, going and, and making noise and all of that it means by exercising your franchise going out and vote you determine the leader that's going to deliver the results. And when it comes to choosing a manager, or when, when, when you look at how managers think, they don't always think about, you know, who has the biggest opportunity to cause drastic change. They look for people who are going to minimize the risk when it comes to achieving the organizational, the organizational goal. So in our country right now, it's important for us to figure out who has our best interests at heart when it comes to the kingdom and when it comes to this guy in news. You know, honor, like honor brings longevity. Honor brings protection. As leaders, we need to honor God and we need to honor one another. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, when Zion travail, there was birth. In order for us to see Diana's potential manifest, we need to travail. God is calling us to pray and fast for this nation. If we don't pray and fast, there can be calamity. So let us position ourselves, let us travail so that Guyana's destiny can be birthed. I love Micah 6, 8. Why do I love it? Because it 
puts a responsibility on man. It actually says this. What does the Lord require of you? What exactly does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. And as we examine those who are offering themselves to become leaders, see if they actually operate under those kinds of um, mindset and behaviors. Mm -hmm. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Because it is a basic requirement of every man. And if you're going to honor God and honor man, you must be able to do those three things. Do justly, love mercy, or walk on So really what you're saying is that your attitude, your attitude must be right. And your attitude your, your determines attitude, altitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. I mean, here, hear the bramble. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. Yeah. And if not, <laughs> let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. <laughs> this bramble ended up, on, ended up on joke at all. You know, he decided or he determined that, you know what? I can burn this whole place down. If it yeah. don't go in my favor, yeah. you know, I can destroy this whole place. So right here and then we got a chance to see the attitude, the true colors of the bramble. And so we got to look through a lot of stuff and we got to look to see, you know, who is really qualified. So may the Holy Spirit, may the, may the Lord really help us to choose. Critical to what we are doing on Monday, March 2nd, we have to pray for the midwives. We have to be very mindful of those who have been tasked, the professionals, with delivering this baby. Because at the end of the day, this whole exercise is to produce a new Guyana, a baby that is fresh and, and viable and full of life and full of hope. We have to ensure that the false midwives, we don't want them in the room. We have to ensure you know, you have, your wife is pregnant and she's waited, you both of you have waited 20 years for something like this to happen. And you're going to allow some three cents midwife to come and attempt to tinkle with your wife? No, 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 no. Let us pray and let us ask God to undertake because we want, we want the best hands on deck to deliver this baby. This baby that will fulfill her continental destiny that will not only benefit Guyana and Guyanese, but in the region. Please choose wisely. God bless you. God bless Guyana. From the rainforest, this is Choices. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.